Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Here is a market update for May 8th, 2014. What you're looking at right now is a uh, daily chart of the SPY, which mirrors the S&P 500. Uh, right now, we're coming into this pivot high here that was made on the, the 2nd of May. And uh, looks like we're gonna probably at minimum of test that today, most likely take that out. And uh, then we're gonna take a run at the next level, which is from the 4th of April, which was the high, the all time high of the S&P or SPY also. And uh, once that happens, um, one of two things occur, either it gets rejected and we go back down, or we close above it and take a run at most likely as high as 1923. And with a close above 1923 on the S&P 500, you could be looking at another 50 points higher, but that's way out. Uh, not sure that's gonna happen. Um, it could still stall out right above 1900 and um, somewhere in between 1905 and 1923, I would look for a t another top uh, before another leg down. If this happens, I would imagine uh, we're looking at it happening here in the next two weeks. So uh, somewhere between now and I would say uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of options expiration or the Monday after, something like that would be a good timing uh, mechanism to use. So let's just take a look at where we are intraday here. It's uh, right now it's about um, here. Let's take a look. It's uh, it's about 1140 on May 8th. And uh, let's take a look. See here, um, we have this high here, which was from the second back in the second of May. And that looks like we're going to come into that today. Market looks strong. There's light volume on light volume days. The market tends to float up, as we know. And uh, that's what we're getting. So we'll just take a quick look at the hourly chart. And uh, what we see on the hourly chart is the same thing. We're coming into taking these highs out here from uh, the 2nd of May and uh, take a run at uh, the 4th of April, uh, which was the all time high. And it looks like that seems to be a probability. The market wants to get there. Um, the S&P and the Dow have been much, much stronger relative to the uh, small cap index or the Russell 2000, which is basically your uh, broad small cap index across the country and the US. And uh, we can track that by the IWM. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the IWM and kind of compare to what we just saw with the S&P. I'm gonna go back to a daily chart and uh, you see the IWM made its top uh, at the same time frame, uh, actually before, pardon me, made its top at uh, May, I'm sorry, uh, March 7th, okay? And it never looked back. So as the S&P was making a new high on, it was April 4th, okay? Or April 2nd or 3rd, here, April 2nd, okay? The... Um, Russell 2000 or the IWM made a, uh, a, a second lower high. So that was signaling weakness in the market. And here uh, you have the IWM can't seem to get off the mat. So what you have here is, you know, some people are talking about a head and shoulders in here. It's a little sloppy. Uh, if I draw a line in, um, you know, this is what they're looking at. It's, it's a, head and shoulders here coinciding coinciding with the uh, 200 period moving average which is the black line we breached it we bounced on it bounced on it bounced on it we breached it yesterday and uh, we're above it today and um, actually we breached it two days ago we're above it here I think we're well I got lines coming out of the woodwork here sorry about that folks let me just get rid of these lines. Okay, remove line, there we go. Okay, so right here, um, we're fighting 
the 200 period moving average and the supposed head and shoulders line here. If we break this head and shoulders, okay, first order of business is in this 105, maybe this gap fill here at uh, 104, 34, 35 area. Um, that's almost a certainty if we break down here and close below here for a couple of days, probably go down here in this 105, 104 and a half uh, neighborhood in short order. And uh, if it continues down, you're going to go down to this double bottom that you can see over here. All right, now let's take a look at the Qs, which represents the NASDAQ. Okay, and on a daily basis, okay, we have much of the same thing. Not quite as low and not quite as weak as the IWM, but certainly uh, lower high, lower high, lower high. I mean, it's just lower highs all over the place. And, um, you know, if this continues down, uh, we're looking at testing this uh, 77 and a half area here, uh, 78. Uh, the next move down if we breach this 200 but that's a little ways off so right now the market's still in an uptrend um you know from the s p and dow standpoint but these uh cues and the iwm are still weak so the market's still suspect and it can turn down at any point uh we just don't know what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis but as we know 2014 is going to be a bearish year and uh, we're probably getting into within the next four to five weeks we're pretty much going to get into some higher volatility, lower prices, and um, that's going to be probably across the board. So let's just take a let's switch gears here and take a look at uh, the oil market because I know I get a lot of questions about the oil market, and um, folks <clears throat> want to know if uh, they can short oil, go long oil, and here here's the problem. Problem is oil is really still in an uptrend. It stays above this 200 period moving average, although it seems to be making somewhat of a bearish pattern here. We hit a double top, it failed. If we uh, can move up a little bit more and fail again, probably go back down. Uh, but with the, we'll call it the Ukraine, Russia put underneath the oil market, you, know, you want to be careful on the downside because any kind of news that comes out of that area can spike oil up, um, you know, ten, twelve dollars uh, on the contract uh, up in the uh, 110, 112 dollar area pretty rapidly. And uh, it's not because there's going to be per se a shortage going on if there's a, an, uh, an escalated conflict, but people think that the oil markets could get squeezed if Russia starts fighting in Europe and pulls back supply and all that stuff. And whether it happens or not, keep in mind, folks, Russia still needs the money from selling oil. So they're they're aware of that. So so it would be short lived if it did spike. That's the point I want to make. But you have to be careful in being short oil because you can really get smashed in the face uh, on a conflict news over a weekend type of thing. So although I think it's making a bearish pattern here, starting to consolidate, maybe take another leg down, just be careful on oil. Let's take a look at gold because I get a lot of questions on gold. And um, here what we have is gold really can't get off the mat either. And here's another daily chart. Um, we, we made a nice high here in gold and it looked like it might continue up and at least test the high here at 137. This is the GLD. Okay, but uh, this was on uh, March 14th. Since then, we tried to come up again and failed. And uh, now we're just chopping around. So really, this is this is weak. Uh, gold is weak and um, I don't see anything to do in gold. I wouldn't be short. I wouldn't be long. But I will tell you that when you go out a little farther and you look at the weekly chart, okay, this could also be setting up for a bearish pattern. Uh, if we get another two, three, four weeks of consolidation here uh, along the side, um, I think oil can take a run down here. I'm sorry, gold could take a run down here at the 115 uh, level. At double bottom here. There's a lot of support down here, but uh, certainly it's not out of the question and it's $10 off. So you got to be careful there. There's really, there's really no, no reason to be long or short gold right here. So uh, I think that's a wrap for today. We're going to leave it there and um, we'll see you guys on the charts and uh, happy trading.